Ready? Welcome to Thursday Thoughts with Kent and Karen. We're just going just to... Just waiting for it to start. Love this technology. Yeah. It's a great way to connect. There we go. This is a great way to connect. Welcome, everybody. We're just uh, uh, getting on a few seconds early and uh, looking forward to sharing with you for a few minutes tonight, this Thursday evening for our Thursday Thoughts. Thursday Thoughts. Here we are again. Here we are again. Good to have everybody here. And uh, hopefully we see people start to log on and we'll say hi as people come on. So one of our one of the reasons we do this is um, in one sense, you guys don't need more media to watch, but to no. share, <laughs> to stay connected with friends uh, through with the ministry, but also try to share something inspirational. So I, I had something I wanted to share this week. It's, it's not really spiritually inspirational, but uh, I see a bunch of videos popping up on YouTube. Um, somebody somewhere has discovered this, I guess, what would you call oh, it? Oh, the menthos? The, what, the menthos. The menthos. <laughs> you need to see some so, bunnies. <laughs> so I, I'm not sure where to send you, but a friend had this on his, on his Facebook, and it was just killer funny, of this kid who's doing a voice like Mater off of the movie Cars. So it's kind of that Southern that dare kind of, anyways, he, <laughs> he, he's, somebody dares him to pay him $200 to try and drink a two liter of Coke. So what he does is he takes the two liter Diet Coke, cracks the lid off, drops three menthos in the top, and then tries to drink it. And I'm not going to spoil it, but you watch it if you can find it and try and keep a straight face. It's I just very thought, funny. <laughs> it it's was, very funny. We got yeah, some people signing on great. now. Hi, Deborah and Wendy. Um, Ashley Secord, all the way from the West. Yeah, I hope you nice guys are doing okay. We're praying for you out there in Fort yeah, McMurray. Yeah, lots going on. Hopefully you've been rescued and things are drying Dry. up. Yeah, hi Donato, faithful Donato. Hi Christina, great to see you. Steve, Rochelle, Rob. Hey, you know, we Joanne, just, uh, we were talking to, to one of the couples that we walk with a little early in the week, and they, they made a comment about something they picked up off last week about mm -hmm. how, as, remember how we said as married couples, you can sometimes help each other, you can feed back to each other, and, uh, like help each other see issues. Yeah, and mm -hmm. sometimes I have a good idea after, but mm -hmm. in this case, what my friend brought to my attention <laughs> is he was talking about his conversation with his wife. I suddenly thought, you know, you can be your spouse's cheerleader mm. when you're feeding back honestly how it's going in your relationship, or you can also be your spouse's critic. And then one of the things that's important, I remember hearing, yeah, um, I forget who it was, but it was a, a marriage expert we were listening to that said, it's, it's very important to make sure you create an environment where your spouse knows that they can win with you. Yeah. So it doesn't mean that you avoid uh, honest conversations, but there's a balance between that and being so brutally honest yeah. so frequently that it's like constant criticism. Yeah. And I just thought it was a it was a balancing point to to bring back yeah. to you guys. We we ended up talking about it together this this week as we're reflecting on the things we share with you guys. Yeah. So we wanted to throw that. And back I think there need maybe an invitation from the other spouse to let the oh, person speak oh. into yes. your life when they feel safe. So yeah. Well, you know, sometimes we forget that God's heart is mercy yeah. and grace. He says, mercy triumphs over judgment. Yeah. We probably all have heard the scripture and then we edit it out of our day-to-day -day relationships. Yeah. So just a, that's not the theme for tonight. That's just a little, no. that's a little left over from last no. week, I guess. However, yes. speaking about relationships, oh, we yeah. just celebrated our 30th this week. Yes, we did. Two and days ago, right? Yeah, yeah. So, so Karen really has stuck with me for 30 years. Yeah. Yeah, so we're we're getting well seasoned, yeah. just seasoned. We're Starting almost to halfway seasoned. to our target. Our target is sixty five. Wow, wow! I had so no idea the target was sixty five. <laughs> you didn't? No. Wait, what were you thinking? It's a the lot of was? years of marriage. Um, yeah, yeah, somewhere around there, somewhere around there. So yeah. Anyways, we had a really great time. Thank you for all the wishes, and um, it's a big deal. Thirty years together. We've changed a lot. I think that's probably the big thing is yeah. that we have absolutely been changed and we want to talk a little bit about what change looks like not just in marriage but just in the christian life so this was a conversation we're having as we're driving we went for a drive on our anniversary yeah because there's and, nowhere to go <laughs> that's right <laughs> and uh we uh as we're touring around we're just reflecting and we're talking about favorite memories and trying to remember where we went on different um occasions for our anniversary and through and, the years yeah things like that it's yeah. funny because we our first 
year we said, okay, every year we're going to go away someplace special for our anniversary. Yeah. And then we went into ministry. We left our careers and went into ministry. So it's okay. Every five years we're going to do something special. Yeah, and we actually did. have. It's been great. We did. Yes. So we're driving along and we're talking mm -hmm. about this thing about maturing. Mm -hmm. Now, um, the, the, the sheer word brings the... Well, it's kind of scary. Yeah, almost the presumption that we are. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, Good we're point. not. Good we're, point. We're, we can be we're, very we're, immature. We're getting more mature. Yes. More mature. Well, yeah. When you we're look, becoming mature. When we're growing we look, up. <laughs> when we look in the rear view mirror of our life, mm -hmm. we are oh. not as immature as we were oh. when we started. Oh, so scary. Oh. We actually, it's funny when you have an anniversary, it is good to kind of look and go, okay, so what's changed? We've changed. Lots and has changed. Um, we look back and go, you know, wow, we were, we were, we've grown up a lot. We've grown up a lot and continue to grow. So anyways. So it, yeah. this, this whole thing of maturity, just, just a little side note. When uh, each year we start the, the year and we seek the Lord together as a team, mm -hmm. the, the theme of maturity came up um, for us as a team this year for mm -hmm. LL. For 2020. Um, when we were talking about the other day in the car, we weren't thinking about that. It was only in kind of. Uh, what do you call that? Like uh, reflecting, we realized, oh wait, this is a theme for this year that the Lord's given yeah. us. Um, and um, so, so, so we're talking about our relationship and, and how we've grown together. Now, yeah. very, very unique. Our, our stories are unique. Yeah. Uh, some of the things we've done wrong, we've done a lot of that. It's been unique. Um, I think <laughs> one of the unique things for Karen and I is we've been our first year. We worked uh, what you might call normal jobs. And then we said yes to call the ministry, mm. and we went back to. I went back to school. Yeah. And right. after five years in industry, and then we um, started into full time Christian ministry. And um, how would you describe family? the effect of ministry on a marriage? Um. Wow, it's a loaded question. It is a loaded question. It's a loaded question. And this is live on Facebook yeah, right now. <laughs> Oops. Well, um, I think it can be very trying because in ministry, people want to put your spouse up on the pedestal, kind of the spiritual pedestal. And I think uh, the family can almost be living in a little bit of a glass bubble. And why would you have um, an issue with people putting me on a pedestal? Well, no, it's fine. It's just not real. <laughs> it's, not real. <laughs> it's not reality. It's not real at all. No, so, no. yeah, I, you know what, though? I, I think um, the thing that we need to say is that our experiences have been really, really rich. And we've learned so much. And, um, yeah, ministry has really shaped us in so many ways. But it's been challenging, absolutely. Yeah, and I, I think, you know, before you think, Sometimes we think like, okay, those in ministry, they're different from real life. Mm. And I, I know there's some differences, but I, what, what, what we guess we want you to catch from being in ministry is that your, your, um, your, your job and your marriage mm. and your ministry, like everything's connected. Yeah. Everything's connected. It's not like your job is over there and your family life is here. Your family life is connected to your job. And it, it creates a heat, doesn't it? It, yep. it creates some pressure. And the, the pressure for us hasn't always been fun, but it's helped us grow, mm -hmm. I guess, is what we're, we're trying to say. Mm -hmm. And we, we've been part of, uh, you know, we've been with LL now for almost 14 years. Mm -hmm. We've been, uh, we had um, 12 years of pastoral ministry before mm -hmm. that, um, plus our time where we were volunteering in the church. There was a lot of refining, wasn't there? Yes, yes. A lot of um, what we would call pruning happening and shifting and thrashing and challenges, lots of challenges. Yeah. And you don't have to be in full-time ministry to experience that. But I think I think when you are in full-time ministry, it just tends to put you in the pressure cooker a little bit more, which is not a bad thing. But I think I think one of the things as we're talking about this um, in our little conversation drive th this week, we we're saying, okay, without the healing that God has brought mm -hmm. in our lives, we were just kind of going around in circles when it came to maturity. Yes, right. you have more birthdays, but it doesn't mean you you become more like Jesus necessarily. Well, and you can spiritually mature yeah. without emotionally maturing, right? So you can well, learn about the Lord. Can you? Yeah. Okay. And I think I think you can like mature in knowing the word of God and understanding the word of God. Okay, but your so emotional works. maturity is a little bit, you know, it can be lagging. And, and this whole healing journey that you're talking about is really essential um, because if you don't have the two working together, then you're spinning your wheels like you were saying. Yeah, and I think one of the biggest contributors when it comes to healing is is because things happen to us, in some places we're stuck, and you're trying to add on more 
um, grit, more mm. discipline. Those things are important. You're trying to add more um, push to be Christ-like in your life. Mm -hmm. Also important. But the thing is, where you, where you're handicapped mm. is you, you you hit the lid of your emotional health mm. um, before you hit the lid of your Bible knowledge. Yeah. And this was one of the things That's that really true. really got our attention early in ministry, and. Um, yeah, we saw a lot, didn't we? We did see, we did a, lot. see a lot. We saw a lot. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, God put us in situations where uh, you had no idea why you're there. A lot of struggles, mm. uh, some tough situations. And yet it was to it was to glean and to learn. Yeah. And um, what we were doing, in a sense, wasn't that big. Like it, no, was, it was small no. and insignificant. No. But what we were learning was unbelievable. Yeah. And I think, I think, you know, now, you know, we were this whole 30th anniversary, we were spending some time on reflection and yes, just yes. saying like, there's been different seasons of our life. And so it's always good when you have a, a birthday or an anniversary to kind of look back and, and just say, oh my goodness, like God has done so much. And um, yeah, a lot of the things that were challenging um, actually were the places where we grew. And I think uh, I would say in our early marriage, we would be afraid of some of the challenges. The challenges would intimidate us. The challenges would kind of like knock our, knock our feet out from underneath us sometimes when actually essentially those were the tools, those were the things that God was asking to be us to invite him into. And that's where growth comes from. So I think we're understanding that yes. as we age and as we are seasoning, uh, we're understanding that a little bit more. So the things that you didn't know when you were younger. So I still remember a conversation I had with the pastor who was, we were uh, youth leaders in our church while we were working and he was the pastor who encouraged us towards the Bible college option. His name was Randy, great guy. And uh, Randy said, um, when you go to Bible college, you're gonna go, you're going to struggle. Mm. And he said, if you don't struggle, you don't grow. Wow. And it was, I mean, I can remember that. I don't think it, it traumatized me, but I remember it like I was sitting there yesterday in his office. And he was just a, a young guy with a great big heart. Mm. Um, but what he said was so true. What we didn't know yet when we were young, starting out, that our mm. biggest growth times in the Lord would be during the biggest struggles. Yeah. yeah. Oh, my goodness. Well, now looking back, you go, yeah. yeah. When you're in the midst of it, though, you try to avoid every single struggle you can. You try to make yeah. things really peaceful and smooth. And 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 yet, like, you know, hindsight is a beautiful thing. And I, and I, and I pray that we learn to continue to use that that knowledge we've learned yes. to not be afraid of those kind of challenges and mm. those struggles because we did, but I think they scared us. So like you already, us. well, they did like you already alluded to it during those struggles. What happened? Pruning. Oh yes. Yeah. Why don't you read that? Yes, I would love to. So we were thinking today about just what, what biblically the Lord says about struggles and, and immediately it came to John 15, one and two, and it's, it's a very familiar verse, but it's just a really good reminder. So it says, I am the true grapevine and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch of mine that doesn't produce fruit and he prunes the branches that do bear fruit. So they will produce even more. So a little, what, let, let me put some parentheses around this. When I didn't understand the heart of God, mm. I was bracing for the pruning like something yes, bad was coming. This has been the difference. Okay, so this has um, been the difference. You're a couple right. of years ago, our team took one of our prayer days and went to visit Allison and Francois uh, Schumerman. Uh, Schumerman. Schumerman. It's a winery. Yeah, they have a little just in Westport. Little Very vineyard good. Westport. They, apparently, they're making some really great wine. Mm -hmm. But um, we went to just learn about it, and it was early in the spring, and they were just oh, uncovering the vines, That's and right. we were asking Allison a ton of questions. You're actually helping. They, she um, invited us to tie the vines up, but we yes. had to find. We had to dig. Well, they actually have to ahead. bury them in dirt. The yeah. cold is so severe that covering them in straw isn't enough. In this part of Ontario, they actually have to bury the vines in dirt yeah. and then to uncover them in the spring. So we're tying them up. We're asking all kinds of questions. And I, I asked the question, how much do you have to prune? Were you, stand, were you there for this part? Um, yes, I was. I think we all were. We were I said, oh, I said, do the vines require a lot of care? And she says, it's a full-time job. Mm. And you could, as she was saying it, I got the picture not that she speaks to her plants like pets or something, but that she really <laughs> loves her vineyard and cares for it. Mm. 
And when I asked the question about how much pruning is there on for a vine, because mm. we have a vine at the center, a number of them, and they grow like weeds. She said, I have to prune off, are you ready for this? 90% of what grows naturally. Wow. So uh, you're, I know you're way ahead of me on this. So I'm thinking, okay, so nine shoots come off, or sorry, 10 shoots come off. Yeah. Nine go, one stays. If she lets it grow wild, mm -hmm. it'll grow itself out of fruitfulness. Isn't that amazing? So in other words, it'll just keep growing, 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 but it won't produce more grapes. Yeah. And uh, I just thought, okay, <clears throat> this, this is another lesson that stuck with me a little bit. Mm -hmm. What would I be like if God didn't prune my schedule? Mm. When I've bitten off too much. And you think about it in this COVID season. I mean, honestly, some people are struggling. And the, and the biggest thing some of us are struggling yeah. with is actually stopping. Stopping, right? Like true rest. Now, I would love to say that I've stopped personally. I haven't, but because I feel like I do have some assignments <laughs> from the Lord. Yeah, you've been pretty busy, um, actually. But there are times when God asked us to stop. Yeah. Um, what, would, what would I be like if God hadn't pruned my character? Mm. What would we be like if God hadn't pruned uh, our well, marriage? Yeah, we talked yesterday, um, last week, sorry, about attitude and just yes. behaviors around attitude. Right. That was really, that's been a, a pruning. But I think you really touched on it and said, you know, it's one thing to know you're about to be pruned, but you can be like almost like grimacing at knowing God is yourself. wanting because you don't know the heart of the Father. You don't know this great deep love that he has for you to say actually, you, I know who you are. I know who you really, really are. And, you know, we've inherited a sin nature, a carnal nature right. that does need to be pruned as part of discipleship, right? So to know the Father's love is key in this. And I think you touched on that, which is so important. Right. I mean, you can flip this around and look at it another way. If, if God hadn't been involved in your life, pruning you, where would you be today? I think about that mm. thought. And do I think I'd be a great guy? No, I actually don't. Well, you're still a really good guy. No, no, but I, you're I'm a better guy. For that. I'm, I mean, honestly, <laughs> if you took mm. God's hand out of our lives, mm. it's true. Um, so my point is, uh, when we 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 cringe at struggle, we yeah. cringe at pruning, and we don't we we cringe because we forget. At least in that moment, when we're worried about the pain or worried about losing something special, mm. God never takes something away from you mm. in a way that you end up somehow saying, "Oh Lord, you owe me." Now you can emotionally, but if you hang in there long enough, you'll actually find out that uh, it's true that God is no man's debtor. Anyway, my point is this. If the pruning sounds horrible unless you lose if you lose sight of his heart. But if you remember who he is, he's a loving father. And Jesus said himself, a, a loving mm. father would discipline his son's character, mm. would shape his son's character, would prune a son or a daughter's it character. It makes us um, legitimate children. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. And I think I think, you know, I mean, in the word it talks about, you know, being legitimate children and being disciplined. And and I think I've really looked at the whole idea of discipline now, you know, very differently. It depends on how you were raised and how you were disciplined in your life can really reflect on how you receive discipline. So true. So a lot of us, I'm, I would say probably many of us have had to understand that God's discipline is very different than maybe oh, what we boy. experienced in our growing up years. So um, it's a, it's, it's a different kind of love. It's a pure love. It comes with love it comes with understanding who we are and what our future is and and i mean this is our creator our father who loves us so dearly saying i will see this work that i'm doing in you to completion it's not just about salvation and you know being you know saved so we can go to heaven when we die but it's actually living kingdom kingdom lives here on this earth that reflect Jesus's heart. And, and so um, we, we just think that um, we've just seen so many changes in our own lives. We continue to see changes. Mm -hmm. um, actually, if we don't, then we're not continuing to grow because I don't think there's ever a point where we just say, hey, we've got it. But there is a maturity you can feel where it's like, wow, we're not as infants like we used to be tossed around. Um, we are a little bit more grounded, a little mm. bit more anchored in the Lord's love. 
I, I think the knowledge that, of his love. I think the differentiation between self-help, though, yeah, because it can sound like the gospel is a gospel of self-help. And actually, no, the gospel is one of becoming more loving like Jesus. And so maturity, it, the maturity question is, I, am I more loved mm. than I used to be? Whether it's a season of tough, tough season of gracious, a season of merciful love, um, or a season of being loved, mm. uh, am, I, am I becoming a more loving person? That's a really good one. Um, yeah. Like Jesus. Yeah. Not, not in a, a humanistic kind of way, but like Jesus. So this week we've heard mm. from probably a minimum five different friends mm. who during the COVID-19 uh, shutdown, lockdown, social distancing thing, they've been going through deep, deep waters. Yeah. Um, and they've been going through deep waters with God and mm. he's doing amazing things in yeah, them. And actually, the I'd love to thank them by name, but I won't. But mm. each one of you has really blessed Karen and I with your courage and your mm. stories, those, those who've, who've told us this week. And we're, we're just, we're so cheering for you because mm. uh, one of the ways that we've learned about spiritual growth and, um, you know, if you think about like, where does God want to go next? Consider the area that you're most mm. afraid to go with God is probably the one that you should run to first. Ouch. Well, I do not mean it that way. <laughs> no, it's okay. It's right. But I mean, the, the thing that you most desperately want to think about in your marriage, the, 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 the topic that you um, give your spouse mm -hmm. the least amount of freedom to discuss is probably the first thing that you mm -hmm. should open up to let them discuss if you've kind of made it a no go zone in your marriage. Cause it, it cause you know, that's a way that we exercise control yeah. and, and bring a, there isn't freedom in the relationship when we do that kind of stuff. So uh, I'm just, I'm not trying to make it like a big heavy, but more so, you know, when you're afraid for God to go to an area in, in your life, our experience is that's been the place where I personally needed him the most. What about you? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, and um, you know, Jesus said he came for the sick we sometimes forget that those places inside of us that are wounded, mm -hmm. that's where we need him. Those places inside that are fear, uh, uh, fearful uh, or immature, that's where we need him. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's not afraid of the mess of our lives, actually, mm -hmm. is he? And sometimes, actually, that immaturity just comes from places on the inside that didn't get a chance to grow up. Um, we're going to be talking this weekend uh, about some trauma um, yes, during a, a, a webinar for first responders. And one of the things that can happen, we know in trauma is that it stunts your growth. It's, it, it blocks you, it freezes you. And so, you know, um, just to apply this to our lives, why is there an immaturity? Is it just our carnal nature? It's part of it. Um, but there's also things that have happened to us deep mm -hmm. on the inside that have created almost like a void of not being able to grow up. And so I think maturity is more than just being wise and having deep revelation of God's heart. It's all those things. But I think it's also to um, allowing God, as you've been saying, to go to some broken places and to see him revive us, to see him restore places that have been lost and broken. And, and that's pretty exciting. Well, one of the, I'm just thinking of a fun story that, um, when we were in Bible college, this was years ago, years and years ago, we, um, Karen and I had been hanging out with this couple that we were close to, wonderful people. We miss them so much. We're on opposite ends of the country now. And um, anyway, his name was also Randy. And, and uh, we were, they called us mature students, but we won't unpack that right now. So hmm. we're hanging out with, uh, with Randy and his wife one night. So Karen and I and, and this couple, we spend the evening together. And the next day we're going to class, Randy and I, and he, he looks over at me and says, so everything okay with Karen, with you and Karen? I said, yeah, why? He said, well, I just noticed you were a bit of a jerk to her last night. I wonder if everything's okay. <laughs> I'm kind of mulling this over inside my head. I'm going, did, did he just say that I was a bit of a jerk to my wife? And of course, it's a little humiliating when you realize, and I look at him and he looks back at me uh, very directly and nods going, oh yeah, I just did say that. <laughs> 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 I often uh, talk about this, but it was actually during a season in our lives where um, there's a lot of pruning going on. There's a lot for mm -hmm. me. There's a lot of refining and, and mm -hmm. God was using um, not just that comment, 
but God was helping me see in the early stages what I was like to live with. Now I've needed his help to continue to that, that journey. Um, and that doesn't come naturally, no. but um, it was a struggle, but I'm thinking, Oh God, if you hadn't done that, where would we be? Mm. If, if you hadn't intervened, where would I be? And mm. so I, I just wanted to encourage you, you with that. Yeah. I know that, um, some of you may be struggling and going through some deep waters. Some of you may be um, avoiding those deep waters with God. And uh, I think we could say we get that. Yeah. Yeah. So we want to really encourage you this week to to ask a couple questions of yourself okay. or a couple questions. What are the questions? Before the Lord. So um, what has God been asking you to do that you're most afraid of? So I'll say it again. What has God been asking you to do that you're most afraid of? That's a big question. Yeah. Do we have two questions or just the one? Well, That's a big one. If you're going to add another one on that, you no. might want to toughen it up a little. No. <laughs> yeah. Now, now, again, I just want to reemphasize, this is not a God's asking you to pull up your bootstraps. Uh, the gardener loves his vineyard. According to Jesus, he's heavily invested. He doesn't want to just prune to get more mm. fruit out of us. Mm -hmm. He wants to prune that more fruit will, yes, bring him glory, but more fruit would also bring us joy. Yeah. So the, the beneficiary here is God, but there's a spillover that touches your life as well. Mm -hmm. And if you've been um, slow in maturing because of fear mm. or hesitancy, join the club. We can, or we can certainly um, what, resonate with mm -hmm. what you're saying. Mm -hmm. uh, we still have lots of growing to do. Um, we both have a bit of a shopping list that we go to God with. <laughs> <laughs> but um, he prunes so, so well. Mm. He prunes so well. He's a well. gentle pruner, too. Yeah, yeah. So as we, our, our prayer for you tonight, and I'm going to pray for you in just a minute if you'll agree with me, is that the Lord would do something really amazing in our lives to bring him glory in this season and the next season. Bear in mind, he knows what the next season is. So let's pray. Mm. Father in heaven, we confess that this whole uh, notion of you being a loving gardener makes mm. us worry, oh no, what are you going to prune? Forgive us, Lord, that we haven't, um, that we've let fear creep in instead of choosing to trust and choosing to believe. Mm. Father, I know you're good. We know you're good. And we want to say, have your way with us. Prune our lives and our families, mm -hmm. our work and our ministry, even businesses and, and everything in our sphere of influence so that it brings glory for you. Mm -hmm. And we know, Lord, you can't prune badly or prune uh, ineffectively or prune for less fruit. You actually prune to bring yourself glory. And we welcome you to do that. And you prune mm -hmm. that produces joy in us. Lord, I pray for your church. We pray for your church tonight. Grow us up, Lord. Grow us into a, a bride and a body that has deep roots in you, that bears deep fruit for you. And in seasons of struggle that we might be anchored in you is our, is our prayer so that we can show to the world nothing better than they are, nothing prideful, Lord. We want nothing of that. But we can show them some hope. We pray tonight for all the first responders who are still out there battling away. Father, give them courage and strength, we pray. And we thank you that we can run to you in every situation. Mm -hmm. Lord, whether the waters are deep or whether they're at flood stage, we trust you. Mm -hmm. And so prune away, Father, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us again. Yeah, and too. hopefully we'll see you again next week on Thursday, Thursday Thoughts, Thoughts with Ken and Karen. Okay. Bye. Good night. Thanks for tuning in.